Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about these credit scorecards and a little bit of a gripe I have uh, with the Joe Rogan episode here. Uh, Joe Rogan recently had on Peter Zihan, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, but he makes this statement, so I'm going to see if I can link the video below, maybe I'll try to insert the clip here. United States developing a bank-to-bank -bank digital currency. I'm concerned with the United States having that along with a social credit score system. Yeah, no, we don't have the math for that. And then the Chinese have proven- We don't have the math for yeah, that. Yeah, well, the Chinese have proven that their social credit score system broke. They didn't have the processing capacity to keep track of it. And that is with a near bottomless supply of resources and full control uh, of the political system. So we certainly don't. Uh, but he mentions basically, we don't have the math for a social credit score. There's no reason to worry about it. And he waves his hands and magically we're off in the sunset, even though this is a key kind of focus here with Joe Rogan. So I would love to actually talk to Joe Rogan about it. Now, I don't know if I would even, you know, be prepared enough. I'm not a well-polished individual myself uh, to be on a national global, national, massive uh, podcast. But most people he has had on are not actual credit scorecard experts. So credit scorecards are scorecards developed uh, to rank people based off of credit decisioning. And as someone who's actually worked in the industry that's built credit scorecards, who's validated credit scorecards, um, who's worked in risk management at these massive banks, I can tell you building a credit scorecard based on your ESG score or your social credit score and specifically, um, is not hard to do. But let me explain why this is not very hard to do in a little bit of kind of corporations doing the legwork for government. Um, so a lot of this stems from Joe Rogan talking about China because China has this social score. They use it to kind of rank people, I guess, individually. Um, that's a whole unethical thing in itself. And Joe Rogan keeps mentioning this throughout multiple episodes and guests. And it kind of comes up and then it kind of disappears. Uh, but it's quite frightening to realize it's really not that hard to do and it's really not that far away. So one of the arguments here, let's just nail this down here with the Peter Zihan comment, which is we don't have the math for this. We're already doing this with credit cards. Um, it's really no different. So the most common methodology that we like to use uh, is something like logistic regression, which predicts you know, a value between zero and one that gives you a probability. Uh, and then you can scale these into some sort of score. So FICO score is the easiest, most well understood version for the public. Uh, it takes into a bunch of factors. It can take in information like your income, uh, your LTV for a loan, which is the loan to value ratio. So, you know, let's say you buy, I don't know, an auto, a car here. Uh, you take out a loan to cover the cost of the car plus the fees and some other stuff added on top of it. Uh, let's say you take a loan for 40000 you know, for a $20,000 car, uh, your LTV is two, right? The ratio of your loan is 40000 divided by uh, the value, which is going to be 20000 and you have a value of two. Now, that is extremely risky, um, but just me doing mental math here, making it quite simple. This is the issue. Like, we can build these credit scorecards already for FICO. So math-wise, th there's no such thing as a limit limitation. I'm going to put it in air quotes here because it's the same model. It's just so when we do that, often we predict out probability. So that's that probability piece here. Um, and the probability that you charge off or default is what we use for a credit score. So that's how that piece is designed on it. Um, they're quite simple. Every bank has them. Every large global even National Bank has them. Smaller banks have them as well, but the smaller you go, the less likely it is to get that credit scorecard. Um, now, you could make the argument, we don't have the technology for server space because we would have to s uh, store enough data for every single consumer. Um, that's already being done again because you can look at all the, the bureaus here like TransUnion, Equifax, uh, FICO, you know, LexisNexis, all that. they store all this data on every consumer in the United States. So storing an extra set of data on you personally is not going to be that hard. We already have all the technology. We're already doing this. Um, the government themselves just needs to find a real sneaky, tricky way to either convince corporations to do it who already have the infrastructure, which I'm going to get out in a second, uh, or they could just do it themselves. They could just spend the money and hire them. Uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people just like me who work in the industry who build credit scorecards or scorecards in general. Um, so now getting into the tricky little nuance part of this. So let's say you do a social score on this. How hard would it be to do a social score? Well, 
There's this big thing called ESG, which is environmental social governance here. And banks are really heavily involved in this for some reason. Um, again, it's tracking data on ESG, which is what would be used to develop a social score. So banks are already looking at this information. Uh, they're already trying to track this information. And just to give you an example of how we could even do this with financial data that we currently have, uh, for example, let's say you have a mortgage and you buy a house. That's tracked in, of course, your credit file. Um, we could look at the square footage of your house. We could figure out how many people live in that house as an estimate. Uh, we could figure out how green you are based off of that. I'm sure they could go in and get information on, you know, how much energy you, you spend per year. Um, you could figure all that information out. So you could start calculating out the information here on how much you know, energy you use, the square footage of your home, even if we can't convince electric companies or utility companies to give us that information, perhaps they're a little more ethical than the government in general. Uh, what we could end up doing is we could just figure out, you know, what is the average cost to heat a house of that size? Again, it doesn't have to be exactly specific to you. And I think the argument that, you know, Peter here is probably going to try to make is that they can't track every single nuance detail about you. And that's what China is doing. They're tracking every single nuance detail and they'd have to store all this information. They'd have to have cameras, they'd have to have all the system, but you really don't. I mean, you think about when you go to get a loan for a house or a car, uh, specifically like a house, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars typically. And that's high risk, right? They need as much information as possible on you to make a decision. So if in that scenario, right, if we're so confident, we'll give you a few hundred thousand dollars, you know, doing a social credit score with some of this information available isn't going to be too challenging. Again, information that you could use would be like, what type of car you have? Do you have an electric car? Do you have a gas car? Um, you know, you could figure that out. There's all kinds of this free information, essentially, that's baked into a lot of this credit bureau financial data that's currently available that wouldn't be that challenging to track. Now, of course, you have social media and all the tech companies, which seems to be somewhat intertied with politics lately. Uh, Elon Musk has been exposing a lot of the kind of the, you know, interactions and workings between government and social media. How hard would it be to track stuff on social media, to pull, you know, how much time you spend on your phone, to pull different articles and things that you like and follow? You know, do you like, you know, I don't know, NPR and do you like green environmentally friendly I don't know, channels, posts, things like that. And so then we could assign a score to that. Uh, again, you can start pulling this information out fairly easily. This isn't challenging to do. And a typical credit scorecard for finance has maybe 20 to 30 variables, which really isn't that much. So you think about if a government wanted to build a social scorecard here, how responsible you are, right? How much, what is your estimated carbon uh, usage and your emissions and all this information that you can typically just glean from the internet, like, you know, you can find people online and figure out about what type of car they drive. This isn't really rocket science to do. And you could pull all this and actually create some sort of social scoring here. Uh, now, again, the probability piece here, you could score this on some sort of range here, but essentially you can tally these things up and have more or less like create like a variable that is a weighted average here. So put this in credit score terms here. Uh, when we look at like your, let's say your FICO score, you can look online and there's a cool little picture and as percentages of different categories of variables, there's a bunch of variables in those categories. Um, and each one of those has a weight and a number and they add them up to get to your score. So you could say, okay, you know, Dimitri has a house of X amount of square feet. Um, he has a family of three. Uh, based on his financial information, he spends about X amount per month. And so we can back that out and say, you know, his emissions is going to be this amount. And they could mark that. Then they could say, okay, what about your social piece of this, right? How many friends do you have that are diverse, that are minorities, that are this, that, and the other? And we could go and pull this from your social media sort of pages. And we can put, put that information down there. And we could give Dimitri another value here. So when you think of like FICO, for example, which I believe goes from like 350 to 950 right now, um, again, it rescales. They just rescale these so they have different ranges throughout time. But uh, you could say, okay, you know, Dimitri's environmental score accounts for 20%. Uh, his social justice score, his social score makes, you know, 50%. And then, you know, the last 30% is going to be like your governance score of some sorts here or whatever other piece the ESG gets, you know, smashed all together in. So is it far-fetched? No. Uh, do I see us going down that path, to be honest? 
yes, I do. Um, even if this is not going to be made public, like this isn't going to be a public statement on, you know, your FICO score is this and your ESG score is this. Um, I can see the government creating these sorts of scores and tracking individuals and figuring out who's going where um, and what you're doing with that information. So again, it's, it's getting into a sketchy part. It's getting into a gray area. I'm concerned with it just because the whole ESG thing is a front is being used to extract and pull more information on individuals. Again, it's not going to be actually accurately based on an individual specifically. So even when you look like at credit scores and uh, credit scorecard models, it's a model. It's not reality. It's a model. So there's going to be pieces that are estimated. These aren't exact um, tidbits of information. on It's an estimate. So anyways, those are kind of my two cents here. I'd love to kind of flush these things out more in a conversation with someone, which would be kind of interesting to do. Um, but no, I'm not looking to actually debate and argue this as a point, which is why I have not gone on any other channels to discuss this. Uh, but these are kind of the pieces and how it would actually get constructed and built. It's really not that hard to do. Um, so I'm not sure exactly why Peter Zihan has kind of just made up some fairy tale excuse. The math doesn't exist when it does exist and the technology does exist as well. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.